We are in a season of claiming your territory. Uh, just tell the person next to you, claiming your territory. Yes, yes, yes. Before I pray, I'm going to ask us to pray. There may be people or situations that you may be going through that are difficult at the moment. I want you to just take a few seconds to just pray over that. And then Mel is going to pray for me before I bring God's word today. So let's just stand if you're able to stand. Let's pray together. And then after that, Mel will lead us in prayer and just asking that we will hear God's word today. And I'll speak God's word today. Amen. So you know somebody, we're talking still about man. If you know man or you know somebody's going through difficult time. You may be yourself. Just say, Lord, I'm here. Uh, Father, please meet me at my point of need. Amen. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We pray for all those that are going through difficult time, Lord. Lord, may you show yourself strong in their lives, O oh God. May you grant breakthroughs, O oh God. Lord, may we claim our territories, Lord, where the enemy has taken foothold, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. May we claim that territory back, O oh God. In our minds, where the enemy is trying to take a foothold, O oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus. May we claim back our minds, our peace. May we claim back, O oh God, who we are in you, O oh God. And so we pray for each other and we we pray, strengthen us, O oh God, and we pray that today, O oh God, that you will meet us, O oh God, at our point of need today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. And, and Mel is going to help us, yeah. Dear Lord, I pray for Pastor and that he'll have the knowledge to speak, that you can speak through him, and that his word will be easily interpreted and understood by us. And please may we use his word and that we can use it to have better lives and lives for you lord in jesus name amen 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 hands together for mel yes amen 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 god always go before us he always goes before us and he always prepares and make provision for the season that you're going through a season that you're about to go through god has already gone before you and he has already made provision. It is time to claim your territory, uh, whether it's in your mind, whether it's in your heart, whether it's your peace, whether it's your space, it is time for you to claim your territory. I want to finish off from where we uh, left last week. And remember, we started reading the, the book of Joshua and we're reading chapter one and we started verse two. Uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. There are things that have died that some of us are still holding on to. And we're still moving around with them, and we're still attached to these things. But the Bible says, before you can move forward, you need to recognize that Moses is dead. And so you need to let Moses die. As good as Moses was, it's time to move on. As good as where you are coming from is good, but now it's time to move on. You have to go beyond Moses. And we're saying many of us are still attached to those things that God wants us to move on. Until we let go of the past, we will not walk into what God has in store for us. Uh, whatever it is that God is in store for you. So your, your yesterday will destroy you. Uh, however good, bad, or ugly it may be, your yesterday will always destroy you. So it's time for us to seize your inheritance. Number two, we said, so number one, recognize that Moses is dead. Number two, we said, seize your inheritance. Whatever God has in store for you, walk in that authority that God has given you. And the Bible says that I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. It's time for the children of God begin to say, God, this is what your words say, and I want to walk in my inheritance. I want to walk with everything that heaven has in store for me. I want to see my children walk in all that you have in store for me. It's time for you to cross over the Jordan. You need to cross over and take that which God has in store for you. So he says in verse 3, every place that the sore of your foot will trade upon, I have given you. It's not I will give you, but it's already been given to you. As, as I say to Moses, verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. That all the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Now it's up to you 
to go and get it. You have to cross over and take that territory, that inheritance that God has given you. Many of us, we have things that God has given us. We have words that God has spoken over our lives. We have, we have prophecies that God has said over our children. We have prophecies that God has said, even businesses and, and books and things that God wants to achieve and accomplish through you. And he says, I have already given it to you. The onus is now on you to cross over and take over that, that, the inheritance that God has in store for you. So in other words, God has already taken care of your tomorrow. It's already done. Oh, Lord, please help me. Oh, Lord, I am supposed to do this. God says everything. I've already given it to you. You have to cross over the Jordan. What is your Jordan this morning? What is your Jordan that you're standing there and maybe you're still praying? Some things you don't need to pray about. I say that. There are things that you don't need to pray about. You need to walk into. And God has already answered and you are praying, Lord, help me with this. Lord, help me. God is saying, I have already given it to you. You need to cross over the Jordan and take your inheritance. Amen. Amen. Oh, my mind. Oh, what's going on? God says, I've given you peace. I have come that you may have life. And you need to walk in that life. I am well. I need to walk in that life. Lord, you said my peace is with me. You said my peace I give to you not as the world gives. Lord, help me to experience that peace. Even though there is turbulence around you and you are walking in the peace of God because that's your inheritance. Because he says my peace I give to you not as the world gives. Amen. Amen. But you have to tread on it to get it. You have to cross over. And I gave you a scenario of the motion dictator in a dictator, motion, you know, motion lights, you know, where, where you actually, when you move in, the lights come on. And until you step out, there's movement, then you're not going to see any light. The light is going to, to not shine. But the power is there. It's supposed to do what it's supposed to do, but it's only activated when there is movement. And I call that movement faith. Until God sees, God responds to motion. Until he sees motion, your faith in motion, then God will respond. He needs to see us actually walking in motion. There are things that God will not do until there is motion on our part. And I gave you examples of Moses that he had to lift that rod over the, the Red Sea for the Red Sea to be parted. Uh, there are lots of situations where God is waiting for you to do something. And God is there, there are many miracles here that just on pause. And God is saying, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting on you. And you're praying. I'm waiting on you. God is saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to cross over and take it. I'm waiting on you. But the people of God, we are afraid to take over what God has in store for us. I'm waiting on you. And I just hear God saying to each and every one of us, I'm waiting on you. What is God waiting on you? What is he waiting on you that you are supposed to cross over and take? Amen. So God responds to motion. God, you know, uh, he responds to motion. And, and, and I was talking about that, you know, you know, if there is, if you talk about something and you, you pray about it and you think about it, but there is no motion, there is no movement, then it's not going to happen. You will not see the light of your destiny. God will not cause you to walk into your destiny because God responds to motion. Tell the person next to you, God responds to motion. And whenever God does something significant in the life of a man in the Bible, it's, it, it, it is after the man moves. When the man moves, and, and you see Jesus, even when he was healing people, he would say, come here. But Mass is blind, and Jesus said, I want you to come here. Come where I am. You have to show motion in order for God to move in your life. I'm waiting for God to show me. God is saying, no, 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 you got to move. For power to be activated in you. Amen. Uh, and so you measure faith by your feet, not by your feelings. Uh, you measure faith by your feet, not by your feeling. And, and, and since, you know, he's already planned to do it, he, 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 you know, uh, uh, why don't I see it? Why don't I have it? Well, it's either, there's two things. It's either maybe you're not seeing it because there's no movement. Or it's not yet the right time. Is the movement in your life? Is the movement in your life? And so the question you must always ask God is, what do you want me to do to draw 
near to what you have in store for me? What do you want me to, to do to draw near to what you have already planned for me, what you have in store for me, God? That's one of the questions the people of God needs to be asking themselves every time. Lord, you have things in store for me. What do you want me to do to draw near to those things that you have planned for me already? Amen, somebody. Uh, but because a kingdom man always has an inheritance. He always has a destiny. Here is number three. Number three from the book of Joshua, as we saw, verse five, focus on God, not people. Focus on God, not people. Verse five, it says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you, says the Lord. Amen, somebody. Be strong. It's, it's amazing what God, so he goes on and he tells them, be strong and be courageous. Be of good courage. In other words, don't let the size of the people problem stop you from your progress. In everything that you do, don't let the size of your people problem. Some of you have been hearing all sorts of things in the, in the week and, and all sorts of things happening and they come and they are so big. And here in this passage, you say, don't let the size of the people problem stop you from your progress. The reason they didn't enter the promised land is because of people. And many of us in here, Many stop or we, 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 our progress is hindered by people. Not because the people did the wrong things. Yes, the people did the wrong things, but we allow people to stop us. Oh, I'm not coming to church these days because that person, or maybe uh, the pastor said this, he didn't greet me, he didn't say this. Don't allow anybody to stop your progress. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't focus on people. People will be people and they will do things that people do. Amen? And so you are supposed to don't let people stop you, stop your progress. Uh, you remember they say that, oh, we are grasshoppers and they are giants. And uh, uh, they looked at the situation and, 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 they, and they allowed the situation to dictate what they can and they can't do. Uh, to dictate their movement. You never allow people to have the final say-so in the life of a kingdom person. If you're a kingdom person, don't allow what people say, do, or don't do detract you from following God. Uh, don't put your trust. It was Elder Richard who said to me, don't put your trust in me. He was right. I said, I trust you. And he said, hey, don't trust me. Trust Jesus. He's right, right? Sometimes we look up to people and, and we put our trust in people and they let us down because they are people. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus and say, I am not coming here for anybody. I'm coming here to praise God. I'm coming here to worship God. I'm not coming to the meeting these days, pastor, because so-and-so did this or that person did this. That's not of God. You need to put your eyes on Jesus. You are worshiping that person if you are not coming because somebody, when you are coming here for God, you say, it doesn't matter what they say to me. I am not going to let anybody stop me from worshiping God. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen somebody? Amen. I'm just trying to free us in the house today. Is that all right? And so he says, don't let people, don't let people. Many of you are stuck by people. We see people's power, people's money. We see people's prestige. And, and we make people the king when we, when we have our own king. And God is saying, no, no, don't let people, whether they have money, whether they have prestige, whether they have power, whether they dress up well, whether they have everything, whether they are more vocal, they are more, they've got clarity when they speak. Don't worry. Don't let people stop you. You have a king who sees you, and he always used broken people. I love, I'm a broken person, and I see where he has taken me from, and, and he picks up, he uses the, the you know, the, the rejected, and he says, I'm going to use you, and I'm going to take and use you. So don't look at somebody, don't look at anybody. If God wants to use you, it's God who uses you. Amen. You can stand up here and you can stammer your way up and say, I, I don't know what to say, but I just want to say God loves you all. Oh, amen. And you sit down. God uses that. And somebody can come and they can be eloquent and make everyone laugh and make everyone jump up and down and do all those things and, and, and all of that. And God says, I'm not in there. Amen. 
There are many people here who are stuck because of people. Oh, I'm shy. Who are you shy of? If God created you and God says you are special and God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made and God asks you to do something, you say, I have the privilege and the honor. It's not about you all. It's about the honor who owns me. And so I am going to stand up and speak for God. Anybody, anybody out there? Yes. yes. And so he says, um, don't allow people. Our own king makes the final decisions in our life. If he says I'm to do something, I'm going to do it. Everybody else might not like it. Everybody else might not go with you. They might not stand with you. But if the king of my life says this is what we are doing, that's what we are going to do. If he says I should stand up and pray. If he says I should say praise the Lord in the middle of the service. What are you going to do? Praise the Lord. Amen. They might look at you funny. They might look at you and say hey look at them. The, you might, the Lord says dance for me. Remember we're talking about this. If God says dance for me. Many of you don't dance because of people. You're stuck because of people. But God says I want you to walk in freedom. Don't let people problems stop your progress. Walk in freedom. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Oh, the people of God need to walk in freedom. Remember, uh, in, you, know, this, this, you know, that's why I love the story of David and Goliath. David, Goliath is nine foot, nine foot about, you know, nine foot tall. This is a huge guy, a big guy, and, and he's defying Israel, it says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. He's daring them, you know, and he's saying, I dare you to come on me. I dare you to come on. Let's get it on. Let's fight. Come on. If there's anyone among you who is strong, let him come. He's daring them. And, and it says that he came out day and night. Day and night. He's a big guy. And there are some situations, some, some people that come on us and, and they are so big and they look like they've got so much power over us. They look like situation and circumstances. And they dare us and say, oh, look at you, and look at you, and look at you, even some bosses that you may have at work. And so this is what happened. And, and, and it says that and Israel trembles. It says that they ran for fear of this man called Goliath. Uh, and they would have a lot of Philistines, the little guys. Remember the Philistines? There were, there were a lot of little guys that they had. But this one, this, this, this Goliath one, this one was special. It calls him a champion because nobody defeated him. The Bible says so. So he stood up there and he defied them. Comes David, little David, 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 a little teenager guy comes out and he says, who is this fool? Who do you think you are? This is basically what he's saying. Hey, Mel, just stand up, right? David, right? Comes David and Robert, just stand up from where you are, right? Sorry, I don't know why you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not like that. Um, so, so, so you see the contrast here, right? And, and, and Mal is saying to Robert, you fool, who do you think you are? And Robert is saying, yeah, I am the tallest here, I'm the biggest here, I'm the strongest here. And so he comes in, and David say, who do you think you are? You may sit down, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, hands to yeah. <laughs> and so, so he comes, David. Who do you think you are? Who is this? That's what he said. And the way he says it tells, tell, you know, is telling, really. David said, you know, he's a little guy. Goliath is a big guy. But twice David said, this, this is what he says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. This is what he says. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who is this man? Let me repeat that again. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who is this man? David says, everybody is looking up there. Everybody is looking at this big guy. They are looking at him like up there. And he says, I am looking up there. And he's saying that, uh, and, and what he's saying is, is, is quite interesting here. He says, this man is not cut. He's not circumcised. You guys are looking up there, but this man, he hasn't been to the doctor. This man, circumcision during that time, it speaks of a covenant between God and the people. It speaks of the covering of God. And so David is saying, you people are looking at the wrong place. This guy has no 
covering of God. He's coming. He has no covering of God. And so he, he hasn't been to the doctor. And people say, oh, you know, circumcision is a sign of a covenant. A covenant was a divine covering that God has with his people. He's, he's saying he has no cover at all. He has, you know, he has... Um, he has, he has size, but he has no cover. He is big, but he has no covering of God. Your situation may be big, but they have no covering of God. You may be small, but you have a covering of God if you are a child of God. I am small, but I have cover. He challenged Goliath because he says that he was not going to let people stand in the way of God's plan. I am not going to let you with your size Stand in my way. You have no covering. I am a child of God. And if I'm a child of God, I am not coming to you on my own. I have the backing of the king. Remember, when you walk under the rulership of God, whatever you say, wherever you go, he stands with you because you are his. And when you walk without coming under the authority of God, you are on your own. And David uh, is coming covered by God. And God is saying, hey, where do you want us to go today? And David is saying, I've got a relationship with God and I'm going to come. And God says, I'm, well, let's go and see. You. Let's go and check this man out. Goliath comes. He's using his muscle. He's not covered. He's using his strength. And God says, we're going to take you down. And watch what happens. And see what happens. Every, even a big person. So you see that actually as you proceed to your destiny as a kingdom man, you're going to run to some big people. You're going to run uh, to some big people by name, by position, by power, by possessions. You're going to come in contact with people that will try and dominate you. That will try and, and look down on you and say, oh, look at you. And you need to know, you need to come under the rulership of God so God can stand with you. You don't have to speak for yourself. He comes and he says, I am with you. I am with you. I will never forsake you, God says. But the people of God, they want to do things in their own strength. And we try to do it in our own way. And God says, hey, I want you to bring me in. Let me in. Let me come. That's why the Bible says that I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going to give you a helper who comes, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he wants to come and help you. What are you going through right now? What is it that you're going through that you're trying to deal with it in your own strength? What is it that you're trying to fight in your own strength? Or what is it that's overwhelming you right now? You're looking at it and say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to manage. And David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. So the, the, the big people don't get the last say. Uh, not when you operate under the kingdom and the king is on your side because David has been cut. So David said in verse 45 of First Samuel 17, you come to me with a sword and a spear. And then later on he says, I come to you in the name of the living God. I come to you in the name of the living God because I am covered. Amen, somebody? Anybody here coming in the name of the living God? Yes. Anybody here fighting in the name of the living God? Yes. Anybody here who is faced with a battle who can look at the problem, the situation and say, I come to you in the name of the living God. Yes. Why not do that right now? Whatever you are facing, why not tell the situation, I'm coming to you in the name of the living God. Whatever it is that you may be going through, I come to you in the name of of the living God. Amen, 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 amen. I'll tell you a story about a situation, what happened to me. Um, I remember um, uh, I was about to come here and, um, and, and I had a situation, financial situation. I had exhausted all my resources to come here. Anybody know when you're coming here, you use up everything. You literally use up everything to come here. Anybody did that? Anybody ever come here before? Yeah, you, you, you give up everything, right? And, and so I sold everything, and you're literally resetting. And when you come here, you're starting from ground up. And so that was like that for me. And then I remember, um, you know, exhausted situations, 
And the last day, I was supposed to travel on a Monday. And this is on a Friday. And they said I needed about 300 pounds worth of money, considering I took towards the, the ticket of coming here. And what happened is they said, um, if we don't have that money by 4 p.m. today, you're not traveling on, 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 on Monday. And so we prayed, and people said, it's not going to happen. Uh, just you know, understand, this is, you've tried. We see the effort you've tried. It's not going to happen. And just accept it. And that friends and that some of the family members coming to me and saying, yes, brother, honesty, pastor, honesty. Yes, son, um, we see you've tried, but it's not going to happen. But there was one guy, a friend of mine is late now. He, he came to my, to my gate and he, and he pressed the, you know, the, they knock by ringing the chain on the gate. Cha, 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 cha. And, and, and so I went there discouraged, beat up, just thinking, God, where are you? And he says, man, I don't have money. But he's Roman, Roman Catholic. He says, you, you have told me that prayer works. You've told me that don't let what people say stop things in your life. I don't know how to pray, but let's go in. Your church is there. Let's go. Open. You've got a keys. Let's go and pray. And we went in that, in that church, just like this one. He sat right at the front there, crossed his legs. He doesn't pray. I mean, he's sitting there. He's doing this. You know, some people do that funny thing with their legs. He's sitting there. He's doing that. And I went there. I just went prostrate on the, on the, on the altar there. On the, and I said, God, if you're God, you need to show yourself strong. If you are God, now is the time to show that you are God. I've had lots of voices, God. I've had lots of people saying things. If you are God, let it be so. We, st- we, we were there for, maybe for 30, 40 minutes. And then he's, I, I finished, got up, discouraged still, prayed, nothing. I went and I slept. And I, I think I was about to, around about 2 p.m., and I heard again, I'm thinking, who is that? You know, like I'm dreaming. And somebody came, um, another church pastor from another town that I administered, said, Brother Honest, Brother Honest, bam, they're bringing the car. And, and he comes, he says, he says, we just heard that you're going to England on Monday. I said, yeah, I was supposed to. Um, he says, well, as a church, we want to give you um, a gift, pocket money for you to go. And I looked at the money. It was 300 worth of money that was in the envelope. I looked at him. I said, this is not pocket money. This is travel money. He looks at me. He said, oh, bless you, bless you, bless you. That's the God we worship. God who answers prayers. Amen. And, and, and so we, we should not let people make the final call. God makes the final call. No, don't let even the situation some people have been told here that you, the disease that you have is incurable. Don't let what people say become the final say over your life. Say, God, you are the one who have the last say. Yes, I feel what's going on. Yes, what's the situation is like this. But God, I'm waiting for your say so. If you say I'm supposed to walk in this, God, you show yourself. Tell me, amen, somebody. And here's the fourth one. He says that they are to stay tethered, tied to God's word. Verse 7, what does he say? Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do accordingly, according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right hand or to the left that you may prosper. Everybody say prosper. He's talking about God's word. He says... If you want to prosper, anybody here wants to prosper? Yes. The Bible is giving us here clues on, and ideas on how to prosper. And he's saying to them, do not turn from what? From it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you have good success. Prosper, prosperous, good success, all in there tied to God's word. 
We don't read the Bible. We don't. Do we? He says, day and night, give yourself to the word, day and night, and you'll be prosperous. Day and night, day and night. God has called you to greatness. He, he, he wants you to be great. He has called you to success. He wants you to be successful in life. And the way you get that is by staying tethered to the book. It's by staying tied to God's word. Don't let God's word depart from you. Meditate on it day and night. And you will prosper in everything that you do. The word of God. Uh, stay tied to it. And so God will never contradict his word. He will confirm his word with circumstances, the Holy Spirit and other people, but he will never contradict his word. The word of God, when acted on, has power and it works. Amen. And God loves you to take him at his word. And I, I love listening to Mama Veronica, you know, every now and again when we have meetings about prayer, and she, she tells us, and I love the accent. You hear the accent comes up. And she says, you must pray according to the word. You're not praying according to the word. I want to really say. And it's true. She's right. Your prayers, your own thoughts, your ideas, they're empty. But when you pray scriptures, you're praying God's word. And God's word has a promise attached to it. Because God says, my word we will not go back to him without doing that which it has been sent forth to do. So when you are praying scriptures, there's power in it. And so Mama Veronica is right. Mama Veronica, just give us the accent one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so kingdom men first ask, what does God say about these matters? In every situation that you find yourself, what does God say about what I'm going through? Whatever situation that you may be going through today, why not ask yourself, what does God say about this situation that I'm going through? And he says, God, show me from your word. Show me from your word what you want me to do about this matter. Whatever situation you're going through, God, what are you saying about this? Show me in your word how you want me to respond to this situation. You decide to do it God's way. You don't decide to do it your own way, even if it looks like God's way looks ridiculous. But you, a kingdom person, will always decide to do it God's way on the front end. Not just ask him at the end when you have created your mess already, which is what many of us do. We go and make our own decision, and then we come and say, pray, God, bless my situation, bless my circumstance. But a kingdom person will always ask God first, what do you want me to do, God? And you act on what God says, and God blesses you. Amen. Not after you have decided and you have caused enough chaos, and then you come and you're asking God. You decide to do it God's way on the front end, not on the back end. Amen, somebody. Oh, by consulting him, you ask him, you ask God. I remember one time uh, my son uh, was fixing one of my, uh, my son's bikes um, as he was growing up. He was young. And, um, and we had this bike, and they come, you know, you know in, in bits and pieces. Spend a lot of time, you know, two hours. I'm trying to work out how to work this thing out. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm smart, and, and I'm quite handy with things like that. But this thing was just really affecting me. You know, I was, we was we try, or oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, and it's not making sense. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The manual was there. I actually put the manual, I don't need the manual. I, I, I don't want the manual. And two hours later, we're still trying to sort this thing out. A friend comes and he says, don't you think the people who made the bike knows better about fixing bikes than you do? I said, yeah, of course, because they made it. I said, so why not go to the instructions? Went to the instructions, read, look, oh, there's pictures, there's this, in no time. 30 minutes, done. God has given us his word, the manual, the instructions on how to do life. 
His word is the instructions for life. And the enemy knows that. And so what does the enemy do? He knows that and he says, I don't want you to read the word. He occupies you with other things. And so people don't read the word. And they do life without the instructions. And the things get broken. You're trying to force this, the wrong nut on the wrong place. You try to do this thing, do it wrong. And nowadays, you know, we've got all sorts of things going on, the wrong things happening because we are trying to do life without the manual. Amen. God's written word is the life maker. He knows more about life making than you, your granddad, your great granddad, your mom, your dad, everybody else put together. He knows about doing life better than all of those people. And he wants you to come in. And so he says, if you stay tethered to his word and don't go to the left or to the right, don't add human opinion, don't add your own thoughts, don't add human thought, don't find out what your friends think or what your friends' opinion on things are. He says, when you do that, then you're going to be successful. But when you do add your human thought to, to it, you're not going to be successful. In other words, you reach your inheritance and you, you will not reach your inheritance and you will not reach your destiny. I'm going to finish with this story. Uh, as I got here, so I managed to, to come up here, ended up coming with 25 pounds worth of money uh, that somebody else came, just cutting the long story short. I got here and started looking for a place and I was given, um, I was given, uh, I went to Bristol, given a place in Bristol and they said they'll pay everything but I needed to go back to Zimbabwe and get a letter in Zimbabwe and the people in Zimbabwe saying you need to come back in person so I just said I don't have money to then buy another ticket, I only got 25 pounds. And then I went to Morelands, the best college around UK and I love that because they do the practice and the theology, the academic, the practical as well. Amen, Robert. Amen. <laughs> and so I went to, as I went to, um, um, to Marlins, and I remember sitting in front of these two people, they asked me, how much do you have? And I said, I've got 25 pounds. And they said, do you know how much it is? It's going to cost you 19,000 for the three years you're going to be studying. That's what I paid, 19,000. And, and I said, the miracle, the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you is miracle enough for me to know that he will supply. And so they said, okay, we see your faith, we see your faith. And so they offered me a place. Little did they know, in the afternoon when I, I took time and I was, they asked me that question, I went around the whole place. That verse that says every place I step, every step, oh no, no, I'm going wrong way. Then. <laughs> Better come back, right, come back, come back. Every place that you tread with your foot, I will give you as an inheritance. I've got 25 pounds, right? And I'm walking, I'm saying, God, if you want me, your word says that every place that I put my foot on, I'm going to, I walk everywhere. In the library, I'm walking in the name of Jesus. If this is where I'm supposed to be, God, I am walking and I'm putting my foot here. And I remember even going to the chapel, taking my shoes off, just make sure that my feet are anchored to the ground. And I'm walking around and saying, God, I'm here. You brought me here, God. And I remember um, offered the place and the besser came. You know, the bessers, they are the ones that deal with the miners. And they came and they said, we want all the 19,000 written, um, as in underwritten um, at the end of the week before you start. Without that, your place is going to be given to somebody else. I said, God, your word says walk. And I did walk. I did walk. And so God, I'm, I'm praying in Jesus' name that my walking wasn't in vain. You know, the best I say is there's no way you're going to start. And so what happens is um, the Besser calls me. This is like on Thursday now. We're supposed to start on Monday. This is now on Thursday. 
Friday was my deadline with the Bessa. The Bessa calls me. And he says, uh, all three years have been written off. Your church have said they'll pay everything if no one pays. I said, my church? Which church? This church, I'd only been to this church two weeks. I said, God, how does that happen? I said, they've covered everything if no one pays. And, and I said, God, you are an amazing God. And I want, I'm here to tell somebody, if God is telling you, you better start walking right now. Start walking whatever it is and walk and say, God, you have given me this as my inheritance. And I'm walking. It's not naming and claiming, it, but it is actually saying he has already given it to us. Amen. And, and there's some people here that are, 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 the enemy has blocked you and he has stopped you. And God is saying, I want you to walk. And, and I remember as I was reflecting, and the, as a, that, that verse just jumped up to me. That verse, it, verse 3 of, of, uh, of Joshua chapter 1, it says, Every place that you put your foot, I have already given it to you. Every place. Not just some place. And, 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 and it is, it's as if God took a highlight and highlighted it in, in my mind and said, yes, when I say this, I was speaking to Joshua and at the time, but right now I want you to do the walking. And I just sent somebody, God is saying, I want you to walk. What is it that you need to walk? Where is it that you need to walk? Where is it where you need to say, God, your word says I should walk and I'm here, I'm going to walk, God. I'm going to walk. I'm going to finish there. Father, in the name of Jesus, you call us to walk. And there's somebody here who needs to get walking. Uh, to just put their faith into motion and just walk around. There's some of you, the enemy has packed you where you are. You are not going to move. But God is saying, I want you to put your faith into motion. You know, sometimes... God puts us, I don't know why this happens, maybe to check out our faith. He creates environment, situations for us that ruffle the nests. Because we become so comfortable at where we are. You know, I have the tendency of just wanting to stay. We have the tendency of wanting to stay where we are and just say everything is good and God ruffles the net and you start seeing trouble coming. And God is saying, I'm preparing to take you to the next level. You need to start moving. Am I speaking to somebody here today? Father, in the name of Jesus, what are we stuck at, God? Reveal to us right now, Lord. Situation, jobs, relationships. And maybe we are stuck and we, we need to start moving. What places do we need to go and walk that you want us to cross over and take? Father, pray right now. Let faith rise up in this place. Don't stay where you are. Put your faith into motion. Obedience. Start walking towards where God is calling you. And he's saying, I've already given it to you.